Does mean we're going. Does mean we are going to. We are going to announce the vote. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to announce who voted how. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to everybody who's been voting on the line. We're now uh, rejoining our regular town board meeting, the June 30th, 2020 regular town board meeting. During executive session, uh, two motions were made and carried uh, during executive session. And uh, one motion um, was the decision to waive uh, the two week notice period and that motion carried. Another motion was made to pay the accrued vacation and sick days to uh, Paul Sebesta pursuant to the town employee manual uh, and make that payment in the current pay period and that motion carried as well. So with that said, uh, I believe we still have to get through committee reports. Um, yes, yes, Yasmin, this is attorney yeah. speaking. Yep. Um, I need to um, publicly announce the, how the vote. Sure. So the vote with respect to the um, waiving the two-week notice period, um, it was the motion was made by that motion was made by Councilman Delarada. Um, it was seconded by Councilman McGraw. Welcome to Google Meet. Enter the meeting pin followed by. Oh. The vote was. Councilman Perez Jathquith voted no. Thank you. You're muted because a lot of people are on this call. Press Council star six to unmute. This call Council is being recorded and streamed. Council Councilman Bellow voted, yes. voted yes. No, no. I'm going to pause you there. Okay, let's. John, you have to mute yourself. That's John. Yep. Oh, six is John? I think he's on two. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. Yes, so the vote on the uh, motion to waive the two week notice period, um, Councilman, Councilwoman Perez Jathquith voted no, Councilman Delarada voted yes, Councilman Gra voted yes, Councilman McPartland voted yes, Council um, or Supervisor Syed voted no with respect to the motion to pay the um, accrued vacation and sick time pursuant to the employee manual. That motion was uh, made by Councilman Delarada. It was seconded by Councilwoman um, McGraw. Um, the vote, Councilwoman Perez Jathquith voted no. Councilman Delarada voted yes. Councilman mm -hmm. Council McGraw voted yes. Councilman McPartland voted yes. And Councilwoman, or I'm sorry, Supervisor, Supervisor Syed voted no. Supervisor Syed made the motion. I would, the last one I was speaking to had to do with, to, with paying the... Um, oh, you're still talking about the first one. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Okay. So the, just so the record's correct, the motion with respect to waiving the, the two-week notice period, that motion, am I correct, was made by Supervisor Syed? Is yeah. that correct, Supervisor? Yep. And the motion with respect to paying the accrued sick leave and vacation time, that motion was made by Councilman Delarada. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And just for clarity, they were made pursuant to Section 409 and then Section 802 and 803, respectively, for Michelle's minutes. Yes. Thank you, Alexis. Okay. All right, so without further ado, we'll move into our committee reports. We'll begin with Councilman Jayquist. I wanna to apologize to everyone for the very long delay and the very long meeting. Uh, and I'll try to abbreviate my uh, uh, committee report. Um, uh, playground campus, you know, starting July 6. Uh, as everyone knows, we're running an abbreviated camp. Um, looks like good participation so far, sports camps also are abbreviated. We have fewer of those because of the, and the contractors are facing, you know, protocols, etc. There are some openings in the older tennis groups. The concert series has started, including there's a concert this Thursday, July 2nd. Um, fall soccer registration is open. Of course, we don't know how that's going to play out come September. 
uh, may look more like soccer drills, et cetera. We'll have to see. Driving range is also open. It opened on June 27th. Uh, senior Center, outreach and communication via phone calls, postcards, emails has continued. Staff is preparing for a phase return to that new normal at the Senior Center, which will start the week of uh, July 13th with an abbreviated schedule, outside seating, et cetera. In terms of highway, um, prepping for the first round of paving, uh, tree crews are out, street sweeper has gone through town once, space and repairs are ongoing. We did complete the repaving of 3.2 miles of the bike path that was done in early June. Many thanks again to Laura Robertson's work on the grant, Ray Smith and his crew for their prep work and assembly and stack for facilitating the funding. Uh, parks, again, crews are, you know, we're behind. We've been mowing and clearing parks for opening of programs and other services. Um, you know, and work on uh, installing equipment or servicing equipment at the driving range, et cetera. Crews have also installed uh, benches and a new sign at the town splash pad, and the disc golf course has been mowed. As far as building maintenance, um, Charlie and Ron have been uh, preparing facilities for reopening, including hooking up water supply lines and putting fixtures back together from the winter closure. Uh, again, also, they've also been helping the Public Works Committee efforts on opening the pool and the splash pad. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a designated employee who will be cleaning outdoor facilities for the summer and rec program use. Also, some new grills have been installed. Um, I'd just like to say staff's been sent, spending an inordinate amount of time and effort to facilitate reopening under these extraordinary circumstances. Many local towns um, have decided not to run their summer programs and other services in the face of the many obstacles involved. Neskina is one of the few localities, municipalities around making the extraordinary efforts to move forward in large measure due to our staff's hard work and determination. So many thanks to them. Um, also want to announce that the uh, Highway Parks and Recreation Committee originally scheduled for tomorrow morning at eight uh, is uh, announcement went out uh, to everybody yes, uh, this morning that it's being rescheduled to next Wednesday, uh, July 8th at 8 a.m. Thanks. Thank you. We'll now move on to Councilman Delarada. Hmm. Councilman Delarada, would you like to make your committee report? Okay, well, we'll come back to him. Uh, Councilwoman McGraw. Here I am. Thank you, everyone. Um, again, as Councilwoman Jakewith said, we'll try to move this along as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to start the way the Councilwoman ended. Um, the Public Works Committee meeting is that was originally scheduled for Thursday, the 2nd, is going to be moved to Thursday the 9th at 8 a.m. Um, water use restrictions throughout the town are still in effect. Please see um, more specifics on the town website, but they have been in effect since last week. Um, obviously, the drought conditions of the, of the last more, month, more than months, um, have um, really impacted our ability to ensure um, water supply um, and um, stream and all of those things. So um, construction has begun on the water main over on Mohawk Road. I, I think a lot of people are familiar with that stretch of road over on Rosendale. Um, we're pretty excited about getting that moving. Um, right now, the town public works staff is, um, they're servicing manhole covers. They're ensuring that they are safe, that they are sealed correctly, that they are properly fitting, all of those things that are just very important to each of us as we drive up and down our streets every day. Um, the transfer station is going to be closed uh, this Saturday because it is 4th of July. Um, if you've driven down um, River Road, you've noticed that our, our beloved old water and sewer building that I've only been waiting to take down for about four or five years now finally came down this past week. Um, and it will be parking lots. It will be some lovely landscaping. It will be much improved and it will be more fitting with a park-like atmosphere of what is over there and is really so many of the upgrades that we have already done. Um, I'm pretty excited to be adding a junior civil engineer tonight. 
um, not just because we very much need a junior civil engineer, but because we are welcoming a female junior civil engineer to our ranks. And I am just one, I'm thrilled to be welcoming Jessica. Um, I think this is a, a nice move. And I just, I thank Matt Yetto, our uh, town engineer and director of public works. Um, I think Josh and everybody who conducted those resumes. Um, those interviews, excuse me, with the, with a lot of resumes. Uh, talk about a nationwide search. We got an awful lot of resumes on that one. Um, as Councilwoman Jacobeth mentioned, um, we've been working very hard to get the pool open. Uh, tomorrow will be the first day of town swim team. Uh, on Wednesday, on Friday, we will open the pool to the general public. Uh, I want to thank, none of this would be possible at all without our deputy town attorney, Alexis Kim. She has worked tirelessly she has um, done something that very few people around here do. She came to the town pool. She's been training our staff. She's been working with one of our managers on coming up with all our protocols and our new rules and regulations as it fits with not only state regulations, county regulations, USA Swimming. She's really done a magnificent job. She's been making signage herself. I really could, you know, she's, the, she, she's the partner I've always wished for in my, my town pool uh, endeavors. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful to her and she trained all the staff on the um, on the procedures. She came up there. We walked through all of it um, yesterday. And there's some great pictures of a lot of people in masks, you know, hanging on her every word as to how to use a thermometer. Um, but I, I feel about as good as we could possibly feel, uh, as uh, Rosemary said, you know, not a lot of towns are trying to venture into um, making sure that we have pools and camps and all of these things and, and park bathrooms open, but we are trying to do that here thanks to our staff and thanks to the commitment of the people who come to work here every day. So um, I saw today that New York City is going to open some of their pools in August. So I take great personal pride in getting our pools open by 4th of July. Um, the splash pad opens on Saturday. Some of you may have seen um, Splash Pad is a very popular place. There, It was popular. It, there was great social distancing going on parents around the edges of it, um, social distancing and wearing masks. But, you know, there it is uh, on TV and in the news because it's just it's a wonderful visual and it's a wonderful thing that all, people of all abilities and ages can can use. And I'm just so proud of it and so grateful to everybody who's made it happen. Um, people have been following what's going on in the canals. And I was on a call today with uh, canal leadership about making sure that they get open, they, they, the water supply is going, all of the things, the recreation around the canals, around the river um, is moving forward because that's a very important part of um, who we are as a town in Niskayuna. And I'm glad that they, um, the Canal Corp recognizes that. So um, we're trying to move forward. Um, thank you to the chief for talking about fireworks today. Um, it seems like it's one of those just small items, but when we're doing things that impact quality of life around here, um, I don't think we're ever better. And I, I, we heard so many people today on Windsor Drive, and those are the things that people truly care about in this community and maintaining quality of life, maintaining their home values. Um, and so uh, fireworks have really gotten a lot of people's attention in the last few weeks. So thank you to the chief for talking about all the things that they are doing as a police force, working with their um, colleagues throughout the community and working to ensure that if you want to call and, and call the non-emergency number at the, at the police department or at central dispatch, um, you will be heard and, and they will take your complaint and they will take as best you can figure out where, where the noise is coming from. So thank you very much. I'm just going to make one last comment. Um, tomorrow I'll be hosting um, a pretty exciting event. It'll be via Zoom. We have about 300 people signed up already. It is a book discussion of the award-winning book, um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. We have um, somebody who's quickly become one of my dear friends um, who is going to be facilitating it. And um, Dr. Hayward Horton from SUNY Albany will be one of the facilitators. He's an Iskina resident. He's been a tremendous asset to me personally and to a lot of the endeavors that I undertake when I'm, you know, just in other civic leadership capacities that I 
um, are involved with seven o'clock tomorrow via Zoom. If folks are interested in taking part of a book on a book discussion, um, even if you haven't read the book, but you just want to learn a, a little bit more about it, you're hearing a lot about how to be an anti-racist. What does anti-racist mean? How do you be an ally? Um, please um, join us. You can email me through the town website and I will hook you up with that. Um, this will be a first of kind of a series of events that are taking place. We are looking, uh, working with proctors and working with Samaritan Counseling, the NAACP, the YW, um, and of course our um, clergy Against Hate, Schenectady Clergy Against Hate, which is such a tremendous asset to our community. Um, we are going to be looking to bring Dr. Kendi, the author of How to Be an Anti-Racist, to town virtually, of course, um, and then following that up with a series of trainings, one hour a week or maybe a couple hours a week on a series of topics, how to be an anti-racist parent, how to be an anti-racist teacher, how to be an anti-racist civic leader, um, so we'll be working with a team uh, on that. I'm so grateful to um, so many people who have come forward and just really excited about it. And then it's going to culminate in what we're hoping is the 21 day cha community challenge on um, racial diversity and, and, and looking at how to be an anti-racist. And um, I've been invited to take part in a national program. I'm hoping to bring that here as well. I think that one of the ways that we will really um, bring our community to the next level is by working together, supporting one another, lifting each other up. And this is just a wonderful example of it. And I'm just so grateful to everyone who has come forward to work with us on these series of uh, events that we'll be hosting throughout the summer. So I think that's all I have, Madam Supervisor. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Is John Delarada on the line? Okay, we'll continue on. Councilman McPartland. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, the Town Police and Public Safety Committee uh, met June 2nd by video conference. Operationally, we discussed the larcenies from cars that were happening in town. I'm happy to report that two suspects were arrested. Uh, this was a uh, happening in Gilderland and Rotterdam and in our town, all the same sort of thing. So hopefully that is behind us, but please, if your vehicles are outside, make sure that you do lock them up. Um, our traffic enforcement cars, both are back out on the road and we are doing everything we can to make sure that everyone travels safe in the town, speeding, no speeding, no running stop signs, red lights, all those enforcement issues. Our officers are out there doing that. Uh, fleet and equipment wise, uh, we've got more radar signs on order. We don't have them, but we should have them soon. We have two cars that are on order, but we really don't know when they'll be coming. Because of COVID, uh, the auto manufacturers are extremely behind. Building wise, uh, in the department, we've taking care of our Sally Port door. We've gotten two bids for new security system at Town Hall, which we'll be discussing at the board level and coming to some decision soon as far as which vendor to go with to revamp the building lock system at Town Hall. Uh, citizen issues, we always discuss that. River Road, Rosendale Road closures due to the new um, roundabout that's being built down there. County Clare cut through traffic concerns, Mayfair Road, stop sign complaints, Region and Elmira, Morgan and Village, all these things we discuss at the committee level and decide what necessary enforcement needs to be done in those areas and what other things we can do to mitigate these traffic problems. Parks, we've gotten a lot of calls about social distancing. We had, uh, kids playing basketball and residents playing basketball and the basketball hoops and trying to tell people that the parks aren't open for those things. Alexis Kim was down there many times trying to do this work on her own, but please don't try to do that yourself. Call the police department and they'll come and tell people what the rules and regulations are. Uh, court issues, Judge Swinton told us it does not look like the court is going to be open until August 1st. That's the latest. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, 
fire chief informed us that they got a grant for some armored vests for their department. Personnel wise, we've gotten many complimentary letters for our officers. One was for Anthony Comanzo, received a letter from a citizen in a call that he responded to. Len Chase, Chris Henry, and Officer Cafaga, a letter from the fire department on a call that they responded to and how professional and how helpful they were on these calls. We also received many letters from and emails from citizens about how professional our officers were at the Black Lives Matter in Schenectady protests. We were on a mutual aid there at the police station in Schenectady. There's a video. Our officers did an excellent, excellent job. Nothing but accolades for all of our officers and the whole department and their involvement in any of these protests and how they've been very professional. So really speaks a lot about the professionalism of our department and every officer in, in our department. Um, Friday, I had the opportunity to do a ride along myself with the chief for three or four hours. We rode around and did police enforcement in the town of Miskiuna. I was just a bystander sitting in the car uh, we ran radar, we responded to traffic accidents, and just get an idea. I recommend it if my other board members can afford the time to do this. It gives you a real appreciation of what our police officers go through on a daily basis and how they, how they perform their duties. Very professional. And <laughs> the chief is still a police officer. He knows how to operate everything from the radar to everything, and he's, he's very good. And I really just want to thank him for doing that and again he's offered it to all of our all of our board members and our next meeting will be july 7th at 8 a.m virtually thank you supervisor great thank you and i'll do last call on john de Rada to make his uh committee report okay I will be brief with my supervisor's report so we can get to uh, get to our resolutions. Uh, as a reminder to everybody, this uh, Friday, we will be observing the 4th of July. So town hall, all town facilities, town offices will be closed in observance of the 4th of July. We hope that the fireworks aren't gonna be too much of a disturbance this weekend, but um, I can hold out hope, I suppose. Um, we will start accepting permits for block parties, so that's, uh, coming soon. Um, but I do also uh, want to note that we're going to be suspending solicitor permits this year. So uh, town clerk uh, Michelle Martinelli and I agreed that um, with all of these circumstances uh, sir, uh, involving COVID that um, we didn't want to allow for solicitors this year. Um, and that's really to protect the safety and well-being of all of our residents. So some important dates to keep in mind as we continue with our phased reopening plan. Uh, next week's summer programs begin at River Road. Uh, tennis is gonna begin at Bladdock Park and Town Hall will be reopening to the public by appointment only. So I wanna stress that it's, it's by appointment only. The doors will still be locked. You'll have to be uh, let in and only if you have an appointment. The week of July 13th, is uh, when we're hoping to open town hall to the general public and actually open those doors up. But it is gonna look very different. It's gonna be probably what you're used to seeing now, um, you know, check-in point, uh, temperature taking, some questions. Um, you will have to wear a mask. Uh, we'll ask that you use hand sanitizer and a uh, mask will be provided if you don't have one. So things will be a little bit different, but we're getting somewhat back to normal. Also the week of July 13th, we're hoping to uh, start holding all of our committee meetings and our town board meetings um, in person once again. Um, those will all be in the boardroom to ensure adequate social distancing, um, but all of those meetings will be out of 50% capacity. So we'll likely be removing some chairs. So, uh, you know, we won't have as many people in from the public, but um, again, coming back to some semblance of normal. Um, and then again, I think it was mentioned by Councilman McPartland that uh, Justice Court will resume normal operations beginning August 1st. So um, very recently, um, 
Governor Cuomo did issue another executive order and this required uh, anyone traveling to or from certain states to quarantine for 14 days. So just keep that in mind when you're considering traveling um, anywhere, all those, that list of states will be updated as they change, if they change. And we will put those on our website and um, I will be issuing a town-wide email just uh, noting that for everybody to keep that in mind. Uh, so if you have, have traveled out of the state from one of these states, um, just keep that in mind when you're coming and you want to bring your kids to camp. Um, if, if we are going to ask you those questions as to where you traveled, um, if that's one of the things that you disclosed, you may, may or may not be subject to that 14-day quarantine. So uh, lastly, I want to congratulate all of our Niskeuna High School seniors. They graduated last week. I am told that the uh, parade that they had on Saturday was very well attended. Um, sadly, I could not be there, but um, I hope that everyone had a great time. Thank Councilwoman McGraw for her work on putting that together. Um, I'm sure that was a, a wonderful day and she took a lot of video and had a lot of pictures. So it was really nice to see and go through all of those. So I do want to remind all of you high school seniors that no matter where life takes you, no matter how much time passes, Niskayuna will always be your home. So with that, I'm going to conclude supervisor's report. We're going to move into our resolutions. We already passed unanimously resolution 2020-155. So we're going to move on to resolution 2020-156 sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? Some, uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. supervisor. I think John Delarada is on now. <laughs> Oh, okay. I know it's midnight, but John, are you on the call? I lied. He's, I he's there. there. No, he's the 08 number. He's the 08 number. Yeah. He, he's trying to press 06 to Star unmute. Star 6. Star 6. Star 6. John, are you... I just texted him an alternate number because Jengis has the same problem when he calls for the planning board. And um, the star six doesn't work for him, but if he calls in on the alternate number, sometimes he doesn't get muted. It's a it's a system thing when you call in on the phone, it 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 the system mutes you and it's difficult to unmute you on the phone. Okay. Here's gonna be my question though. How He's about now? Can you hear me now? Uh, Can you hear me? John? Yes, John. I, Would you like to give a committee report? I feel like the Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? We can. Yes. All I will say is that <laughs> my next meeting is July 10th, which is about eight days later than normal due to the July 4th weekend. And regarding the Windsor Road people, they did a really great job tonight. Um, I want to commend their efforts. Um, I never believed redirecting a thousand cars per day through the neighborhood to the town center was advancing our comprehensive plan. So in that regard, I'm very pleased that there is no roadway connecting Windsor and River. Um, our comprehensive plan does prioritize connectivity, and I believe that that bike hike trail accomplished that. I do understand the neighborhood's concerns with the crash gate um, because I don't really see the public benefit of it. There hasn't been any type of uh, complaint regarding emergency access where they haven't been able to get there. So it seems like an unneeded expense, but overall, it looks like a lot of concerns were addressed. Um, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about it and that won't come up until the next meeting, but those Windsor folks really did a great job. Thank you. All righty. Okay, great. So now we will move into our resolution. We will begin with resolution 2020-156, sponsored by Council on McGraw. We'll the court two three. A resolution calling for a public hearing on proposed local law board the residency requirements for the position of town controller by amending chapter 27 of the code of the town in Iskiuna. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I just will very quickly say the purpose of this resolution, which has been around now for a few months since before our COVID crisis, is to really ensure that we have a very robust search um, 
as I said earlier, I've heard it said that we're having a nationwide search. Most searches are nationwide searches now, just by the nature of monster job, you know, these all of those um, job boards. Um, but this, our, our commitment has truly been to that. And um, this is one step that we can take to show the community that we are willing to look beyond our borders um, to really attract the best and the brightest for this very important position. So thank you, Madam Supervisor. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five eyes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-157, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution establish, establishing the standard work base for certain elected and appointed officials. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman, Councilwoman McGraw. I did actually have a question about this. I'll just ask it now. Maybe if Janet Wynn or somebody is still on the line, how come not all of the elected officials are on this? Yeah. Where are you keep going? I believe they are. There should be two attachments. Yeah. There's two pages. There's two Something pages. in between. And one on the attachment and one page on the second attachment. I, okay. All right. There's something in between. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Saya. Yes. Five eyes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 158, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution amending and adopting the family and medical leave policy for the town of Niskiuna. Thank you. Do I have a second? Do I'll second it. Um, okay. I just, this is one that I guess I, it's 11 after 11. I, is, the, is this urgent that we pass this tonight? I mean, it's got exhibits out to H M L. I don't even know. I lost track. This I will say here, and we only really got it yesterday. The exhibits are just forms directly taken from the Department of Labor's website. It's just okay. to make it so that they're all in one place. Yeah. Uh, Paul Sebesta, Paul Briggs, Janet, and I extensively reviewed the actual FMLA policy itself over the past couple of weeks and met uh -huh. to discuss it. Um, it. We can. I mean, we can. There's one reason for why. It, um, well, I can't say during an open meeting. There's one employee that's impacted by this, right? Yeah, the head of request that it be yeah. any representation, it would be done before their I, I did talk to Sebesta about this before he left, and I yes. was in favor of moving forward as quickly as possible. I thought we would have moved forward a couple of weeks ago on this. I was in favor of having it during the special or one of the six specials that we've had since then. Um, okay, so that one employee is negatively impacted if we don't move on this it's just a lot you know? yeah it's a lot except i will say that it's it's coming directly a lot of it as you'll see it has is citations like it's coming directly from the the regulations it's not yeah. really oh, it's yeah, yeah, coming yeah. from discretionary so i mean it's just improving upon a policy which where we identified known defects so just it seems beneficial to move forward as soon as possible unless Sure. I don't want to amend it if you find like an error in it, but I think just we're operating under about the policy that's not correct now. Yeah. Okay. And everyone's in agreement with that. I'll say it again. I was all in for favor of this when Sebastian discussed it with me regarding the one employee who would be impacted. So, okay. All right. We have a motion and a second, I believe. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. 
Next resolution 2020-159. Sponsored by Councilwoman Jacquet, Supervisor Syed, Councilwoman McGraw, Councilman McPartland, and Councilman Delorado. Will the clerk please read? <laughs> a resolution establishing a task force on racial equality and justice for the town of Niskayuna. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, Supervisor. I'd like to thank everyone for um, their efforts to put this together. Uh, this task force will improve the lives of Niskayuna residents in a meaningful way by having stakeholders guide the work toward achieving equity and eradicating racism and discrimination in our town. I've already communicated with a number of town residents who I've never had the pleasure of communicating with before who are interested in serving. The stories and feelings they've shared have strengthened my resolve to help effectuate real change. We can and will be better on the other side of this. Uh, tomorrow we'll email everyone who's expressed interest in serving and ask them to confirm that and share their reasons for interest uh, and explain you know, what they can contribute. We'll also send out a town-wide email to make sure that all who are interested in serving have an opportunity to indicate that. Um, while not everyone uh, interested may be able to serve on the 15-member committee, I'm confident that we'll be able to find opportunities through this work um, for all interested residents to have a voice in effectuating change. And uh, again, I thank everybody for their involvement, participation, support, um, and um, look forward to moving forward in a, in a positive way. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I just, I want to thank Councilwoman Jaquith um, for uh, talking this through with me and some of the issues that I had with it. I appreciate that she is incorporated and she just mentioned um, some of my concerns about outreach in inclusivity um, and ensuring that we have as many people as possible um, who actually know about this and, and can come forward if they are interested and they do have the time to be part of it. Um, so thank you for that. I know you put a lot of work into this, Rosemary. So um, thank you on behalf of the community. And um, thank you for um, just taking my suggestions into account. Um, as you mentioned, the, e the town-wide email that will go out tomorrow, um, encouraging people who are, are interested in coming forward. Um, we've always found that to be the most effective way to reach mm -hmm. as many of our residents as possible. Um, Rosemary, I just have a couple of questions as it relates to um, just some of the other, you know, more technical aspects of the resolution. I, I you know, I've obviously, you, you've talked about it. Um, I've seen the media accounts. I've, I've talked about, I've read people's personal stories, but I just have um, just a couple of questions about the resolution itself. Go ahead. Um, so as it relates to the scope, what, how do you see this, how that part of it playing out? So will the group be making res recommendations to the town board? Will town board members be part of the, the committee? So uh, the way I see it is like any other, you know, sort of committee we've established, it's, it's advisory, right? So we, we task them with, with the tasks that we've, you know, laid out in the resolution um, and they come back with, with recommendations. Okay. But um, obviously they'll need to have access to, you know, town resources. So, um, you know, we need to see the policy on this or we'd like to, you know, talk to Matt Yetto about how he, you know, advertises for engineers, you know. So it will be okay. sort of, you know, the ability to reach out and get resources um, so that they can they can under have a, an understanding and make some recommendations for us. Okay. So do you see them requiring staff? Uh, I don't I don't see that, but access to information. So no, I mean, you know, I don't think there's any funding component. That And that was my next question. And, you know, it's a talk in the terms that you and I live in, you know, it, what's the fiscal impact of this? Right, I don't, I don't see any that doesn't mean, you know, I sat in a historical committee, you know, meeting, you know, in, in December and I saw that they had, they were allocated some money that they were going to use to, you know, buy a video camera. I, I imagine if they, if the group wanted to, you know, had felt a need, they could, they'd have to come to us and, and, you know, 
uh, elaborate on that need and ask for whatever that you know need might entail. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank oh, you and so I just wanted to. I think one other. Uh, you can you. Let's move on with this. I okay. feel like you're biting right now. Forget about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I, I just like to thank uh, Councilwoman Jake with for spearheading this, and all my colleagues for co-sponsoring this this resolution. This is something that government can do and government should do, and that's what we're here to do: try to get equity and get rid of racism. And this is something that we're doing. It's a small part. We all know that. The only way to really stop racism starts with every individual, every one of us and everyone watching us, everyone in our town has to do it on their own. We need everyone to say, I'm not going to be a racist. I'm not going to have anyone in my sphere of influence as a racist. And that's how we can make some real change. But for us, for the town board as a government, this is one of the steps that we can do and we should do. We live in a society where we don't see people as race, we see people as the human race. And again, Rosemary, thank you for starting this, and hopefully we can get to that in our town. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yes, um, I am happy to co-sponsor this resolution, proud to co-sponsor it, actually. However, I do notice that all of us have co-sponsored it. I don't know if we'll be able to provide a second. So we might need one of us to second. I will gladly do that if we do. I, I think we had Councilman McPartland second. But he's co-sponsoring it. So I mean, can, can we do that, Mr. Briggs? I'm not sure. One. Usually one person would drop off. That's what we've done in the past. Yeah. John is offering to drop off. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we need a second. Okay. Gotcha. I understand now. Okay. I'm very proud to co-sponsor, though. I must say, it's a great resolution. It seems odd that you would have to have a, a second. I mean, if everyone's making the motion, uh, you know, you don't yeah. need a second if everyone's on the motion. Which sounds like a technical glitch. We need a second. Mm -hmm. So, so Bill seconded, so he's, he'll he'll drop off just for the formality of providing a second. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? I would like to echo everyone's sentiments. I uh, commend Councilwoman Jake with for spearheading this initiative. I'd like to thank all of our residents who have sent in their letters of email support for the formation of this task force. I will proudly be voting in favor of it tonight. And uh, I look forward to our community having very candid discussions about race and equity issues and look forward to how those dialogues will better inform us in our town's programs, policies, and services. So um, most importantly, I, I hope and I know that this task force will inspire meaningful change in our community. So with that said, will the clerk please call the roll. Councilman Delorado. Yes. Councilman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Saya. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-160, sponsored by oh. Supervisor Saya and Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to affirm the town of Niskuna's compliance with the New York Forward Statewide Reopening Guide and authorize a stipend. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I just want to talk again about Alexis Kim and all she has done to make this a reality. She has worked tirelessly. She has spent since since we closed, she really has been um, right there on every single executive order from the governor, everything that we need um, as it relates to um, 
PPE and, and other items that we have needed, anything that we have needed looked up. Um, she has compiled this document herself. She has worked very, very hard under the guidance of Paul Briggs and others to try to, but she has really just, she has stopped at nothing. She, as I mentioned before, she has been willing to train staff on how to use a thermometer. I mean, she really, she's willing to do everything. Um, she is texting me. I look at, distracted a little bit. I, you know, I'm not watching TV. I'm, she's texting me signs that she's made. Uh, she's just really um, been amazing. She's been a, a one woman show on all of this. And I'm very, very grateful. And um, I am very pleased that we'll be able to um, show our gratitude to her um, and, and our recognition that she has taken on a substantial increase in um, duties and, and providing her a small stipend to compensate her for the hours. And any of us who communicate with her regularly recognize um, it's not nine to five with Alexis. So when you get your texts at three in the morning and five in the morning, you know, she is just on it at all times and she never misses a beat. So I'm, I'm very grateful for what she has done. And um, now I'm gonna ask her a question. So Alexis, are you, on yeah. camera, can I talk to you? Um, one of the issues that's been raised is um, some employees, perhaps some departments, aren't wearing their masks. Um, and yeah, I've heard that. And as they back back and forth with other employees, they've made other employees uncomfortable. Is there some way? I, I just don't know as it relates to employee contracts. You know, our, our collective bargaining agreements, other things. Briggs way in here. Our, our employees have to wear their masks. I, I'm just... Yes. So there, I mean, as I say, masks are not a substitute for social distancing. I take off my mask when I'm in my office with my door closed. But sure, of I, 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 every, you know, it's, every, I think everyone's been following that it's a condition of entering the town hall and you need to have a mask on. You should be wearing them anytime you are walking in the hallways, et cetera. I think where the ambiguity has come in is it, when you're at your workstation. So if you're in like a workstation cubby, that's within an open office of whether or not you should be required to wear a mask in that instance. The reality um, of our situation is half of our employees don't work in town hall, more than that. Exactly. And so that's, I mean, that's why we're doing People that. are seeing them out. They're not social distancing. They're not wearing masks or some of them are wearing masks. Others are not wearing masks. And I, I, you know, as I always, my, my two rules of thumb are I try to um, avoid wild turkey on wild turkey violence and employee on employee violence. I, I want everybody to get along. Yes, so that's something we, I can reiterate to department heads. I mean, I know the police The police is a little bit different because of the emergency nature of the masks. And I know I can reiterate in, in a memo, it means maybe set it out, uh, the mask requirements and you know, set the relevant. Okay. So I'm willing to have you reiterate it for this month. Yes. But I'm going to revisit it next month. And if oh, no, we, I think, we I need think a policy it. where it's one strike, you know, I just. Yeah. I no, we can require it because, you know, like I said, we are liable. It's COVID is a worker's compensationable, a compensable injury, meaning if we expose somebody on the job and we are aware of it to COVID, uh, yeah. that's you know, like the liability. We have an eight phase reopening plan. Our phases are twice as many as the state in our 21,000 town, we have population town, um, <laughs> primarily because the staff is worried about getting sick. Yes. Well, Oliver, you can reiterate now you should be wearing a mask. You have to wear a mask when you enter a town of facilities and when you're at town hall, unless you, I would say, if you send me an email and explain why you don't think you need to wear a mask while you're sitting at your, your workstation, if it's in a public area. I'll hear you out, but I mean, the law has been very clear. And I think since phase one through phase eight, it seems as if we'll be wearing masks through 2021. I just ordered Taylor them because she's going to be two in, in October. So <laughs> the guidance for higher education, which is the fall, is having everyone wear a mask through the winter. So that I just assume the same will be applicable to the public sector. Thank you very much, Alexis. Mm. Do we have any further discussion? Yep, just Thank you for the excellent work, Alexis. All right, moving on, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. 
Next resolution, 2020-161, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution designating town attorney as manager of human resources. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? So yes, Supervisor, um, I, I agree with many of the comments that have been submitted with respect to this resolution. Um, I think the town of Niskina needs to invest more attention and resources to our human resource obligations. And this needed to have occurred before now. I know there's been some discussion about it for some time, um, but I feel really strongly that we should no longer be applying, you know, band-aids such as the proposed current resolution which assigns this very important function to someone who you know, doesn't possess a human resource expertise, is not full-time, is not on site. And I, and I understand it's intended to be temporary, but the resolution doesn't set a time frame, And so it can, you know, it can remain until we designate otherwise. So I just feel, uh, you know, given, uh, given the, you know, uh, recent history and again something that the town board's been talking about even before I started serving that um, our town employees you know deserve a dedicated HR professional and I think everyone's better off if we engage in a conversation um, regarding other alternatives both in the interim which could include a you know professional HR contractor and a long-term solution and so actually for that reason I'd like to move to table this resolution okay we have a motion to table. Do I have a second on the motion to table? I'll second that motion. Great. Do we have any discussion on the motion to table? And I will echo the sentiments uh, just expressed by Councilwoman Jayquith. Um, I would really like to proceed forward with filling this position as you know I have intended for the past couple of years. It has been a funded position in the budget. Uh, for a number of years, and that was always the intention, was to move someone permanently into this position due to COVID and some other constraints. Um, even though that position was separated out, that we actually had a job description that we were about to post. Eventually, the world came to a halt, and here we are. But I think we should now proceed with uh, hiring that, that particular position very specifically so with a dedicated individual who will be here full-time, ideally. Actually, the the position funded is part time, isn't it? Yes, me. It's uh, it is part time. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I would much rather do something rather than nothing. And what's being proposed right now is that we don't do anything in the hopes of hiring somebody later down the road. I don't see the logic in that. Right now, we're hiring somebody who's been a dedicated town employee and who knows our town handbook and our town very well. He serves at the pleasure of the board. And when we're ready to hire somebody permanently and when we actually have the money to do it, we can do that next month or the month after. Um, so for that, we're not voting on this table yet, are we? So I would like, I need a point of parliamentary procedure from Briggs or I, I have plans on making. We have a motion and a second on, on the motion to table. So. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's that's the motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll proceed with the vote on the motion to table. Councilman Delarada. No. Councilwoman Jakeworth. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. No. Councilman McPartland. Yes. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Three yeses and two noes. The motion is tabled. Great. So I am going to speak to the resolution still. So, sure. Great. Because I had planned to make a motion to amend the resolution. Obviously, I think everybody who follows our proceedings knows that we don't write these resolutions ourselves. Um, the resolution that attempted to capture what we were trying to do was put forward, and I think it was somewhat confusing. 
Um, what we are just trying to do here is do exactly what we did with the comptroller position, which is appoint somebody temporarily. I don't understand the reluctance to do that. Um, they would serve at the pleasure of the town board, which in other words, just as the comptroller would mean that we would be replacing them and putting the HR position person in that position. But just somebody who could oversee the files, any questions, all of the legal issues. So now, as I understand it, no one is doing that position. And I just, I'm not really clear as to why we're doing it that way. Um, the town attorney has been here for over 30 years and we're really talking about a month. And what I think we all had agreed in a previous meeting was that he would ensure that we got moving on the searches that are so critical to the future of the town. And he's already been doing that. He, al he also negotiates our contracts. So that was all. And I, I just thought that perhaps if we would have discussed an amendment to it, it would have clarified that, but we decided not to. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. So who will be conducting our HR? That currently will uh, be the duty of Janet Wynn. Mm -hmm. And she has three staff members in her office. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's, it's gonna be the same function that it's always been in the comptroller's office um, mm -hmm. for this time period while we hire for um, a replacement. Uh, so we put that, you know, job posting out where we figure out how we want to proceed forward, whether it's hiring a consultant, uh, given budgetary constraints. Um, so that, that's how we will proceed forward. Denise, to some of the issues you raised, I mean, Paul been involved in contract negotiations that that will continue. Um, he's, he's, he's been doing that, but there's some of the other, you know, um, issues that perhaps Again, I'm happy to engage in a conversation tomorrow, the next day, about Great. something you know that relates to having the contact, the keeping the files, having the contact um, yeah. in in town hall or someone's ex that is accessible to deal with, you know, complaints, etc. But I think we all agree that it needs to be addressed, you know, in a longer term fashion, in a in a better fashion, in, in a very good defined fashion, and um look forward to those com that conversation. And I'd much rather have it sooner than later, as we all yeah, would. I do as well. I, I think that having the attorney there and being able to handle it for a month it was the best way to do that. I also was hoping that we could have done a variety of things, um, tasked him with um, talking with the county about perhaps um, looking at some of their affirmative action policies and perhaps sharing services with them on their affirmative action officer. I, I think he's best positioned to be able to talk to the county about that and perhaps negotiate it and present it as something that we could then further discuss. Those are those are great ideas. Uh, those are great ideas. And, and uh, you know, for example, I, I, I do those in my office. It can be someone who's an HR professional, uh, but doesn't have to be a lawyer that can you know, engage in those in those conversations. But definitely, I think we all agree that the HR function needs yeah. more attention, more definition, and more focus, more resources. Yeah, so let's I take this very seriously. As I said in our previous session, you know, my husband was the HR director for the county for 10 years. Before that, he ran HR for the New York State Assembly. I, he takes this very seriously. We take this very seriously in my family. So, you know, we, we really look at what, what the HR function is and, and what, what they do and what they can really mean to an organization so and i and working with paul briggs for 11 years i really felt like he was best suited to be able to get us to that next place quickly so this is an unfortunate lost opportunity okay we're now going to move on to resolution 2020-162 sponsored by councilwoman jayquith will the clerk please read a resolution appointing temporary employees in the highway department and parks department. Thank you. Do I have a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. 
Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-163, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution appointing two grounds maintenance workers in the Parks Department. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Well, if this resolution passes, I would like to welcome Molly Gibson. I think she'll be the first female um, person to hold this job, and we're very, we'll be very happy to have her. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Saying none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-164, sponsored by Councilman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution appointing an employee to the position of working crew leader in the highway department. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Saying none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-165, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution permanently appointing a grounds maintenance worker in the Parks Department. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Saying none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-166, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution appointing additional seasonal employees in the Office of Community Programs and hiring independent contractors. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-167, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute and amend a license agreement with Niskuna Lacrosse Club, Inc. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman Cartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-168, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to enter into and execute a license agreement with AV Starfish Swim Club, Inc. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Saying none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-169, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution permanently appointing a water and sewer maintenance worker in the water and sewer department. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. 
Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020, Democrat sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution appointing a person to the position of junior civil engineer in the engineering department. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I just want to welcome Jessica Gerber. Um, this is a very important position, junior civil engineer at the town, and I'm looking forward to working with her. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Then, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-171, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw and Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution prohibiting the County of Schenectady from performing excavate, excavating, excavating on or within the town of Niskuna, Villa, Villa de Mar, right away for construction of an entrance or exit from the Niskuna Co-op Plaza parking lot in connection with the Knott Street Improvement Project. Okay, can I get a second? Okay, there's no second. So we're gonna move on to resolution 2020-172 sponsored by Councilman McPartland. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on proposed local law to discontinue monitoring services of emergency alarm systems by amending chapter 55 of the code of the town in Eskuna. Thank you, can I get a second? Can I have a second? For any discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 173, sponsored by Councilman McPartland. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing payment to Niskuna police officers for time spent obtaining COVID-19 antibody tests outside of the scheduled workday. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Is this for all town employees or is it just for the police officers? It's, uh, it's for certain police officers, so um, not for all town employees and also not for all police officers. It's just a certain number, certain few. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-174, sponsored by Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on proposed local law to amend Chapter 98 of the Code of the Town of Niskayuna, entitled please. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman um, Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-175, sponsored by Councilman Delarada and Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution adopting a shade structure policy for the town of Niskuna. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? 
Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-176, sponsored by Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on a special use permit for an average density development located at 2538 Rivers Road, Ells Farm. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Councilman Delarada. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yeah. So as it stands, I have four yeses and John Delarada is an, uh, not voting. No, I'm voting. I'm sorry. I couldn't, for some reason, couldn't be heard. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Five eyes. Thank you. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-177, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw and Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on a proposed local law to amend the code of the town in Iskiuna by adding chapter 82 entitled Regulations of Chickens. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? John, John, do you want to have the public hearing on this next month or do you want to wait? I just, there, it seems like there's an awful lot going on. You know, the last few months, it just, yesterday I just felt like things are just chaotic. Um, are, are you ready to have the chicken hearing next month in the middle of Windsor and everything else? I'm happy to do whatever you want to do, John. I just... I was going to, I agree that the Windsor Accord is going to take a lot of time. Denise, you and I have been participating while well, everybody has in those meetings and they've been going many, many hours. So we're gonna have to hear from that. It's going to take mean, a while. I, I, you know, as I say all the time, I have a broken record. I'm becoming Lorene, but it's midnight. I never had a town board meeting till midnight. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just feel like from when we get the resolutions to what's going on to, you know, the, the personal attack. I, I'm just so uncomfortable. And, and we're going to do chickens now, too. John, if you want to, I, I, I'm with you. I'll, I'll, I'll I don't have a problem. I mean, obviously, there's more important town business than backyard chickens. But, um, <laughs> you backyard. know, however you guys want to do it, I'm easy. Uh, this is your thing. I mean, I... I'm co-sponsoring it because I do believe there should be a hearing, but I've made my position on well, this pretty no, clear. Let, I see. feel like let's everybody have, deserves to be heard. Let's have the hearing. Keep it on. It's on. I mean, if people of Windsor Ave, I think they've really been heard pretty good, but I'm sure they'll want to be heard again. Let's keep it on. Okay. Why do tomorrow what we can do today? We can always start the meeting earlier, too, when we hold the public hearing. <clears throat> That's true. All right. Is there any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-178, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to enter into and execute a retainer agreement with outside counsel. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. For any discussion? I just um, have to make a required disclosure, even though I'm not a voting member or at their town ethics code section. 17-4, uh, I believe 
1.1K requires that any employee who had any involvement in drafting legislation or giving an opinion on it must disclose past or prior involvement. Uh, I worked at Nixon Peabody um, prior to being joining the town. Um, just want, I needed to make that disclosure for the record. Nixon Peabody's international law firm, over 700 employees, and um, there is no conflict of interest. And second of all, this is an, uh, the town attorneys are not going to be involved in this investigation. It's going to be conducted um, and privileged, and at the pleasure, at, the client is the town board. So just wanted to state that for the record. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delgado. I'm, I'm sorry, I just have a couple of things to say regarding this resolution. Um, I am in favor of this investigation. However, I think we have to be fair with all of our employees uh, be they appointed or civil service. Um, we've had a submission this evening that regards our deputy supervisor. And I think when you look at the submissions of the deputy supervisor and the actions that we're currently taking with our comptroller, I think they have to be reconciled. Obviously our deputy supervisor is still employed by this town. Our comptroller that we're investigating is retired. He's no longer employed by the town. So if we're investigating our retired comptroller, I think we have to we have an obligation to have a very similar investigation with our current deputy supervisor. I actually think it's a lot more important because he is a supervisor. Um, he's in a supervisory role. This opens the town up to all kinds of liability when we're on notice of allegations in court documents and in sworn depositions. These allegations are not a fishing expedition. They're sworn to. So I don't know how we can say that the allegations that were again raised and inserted in the meeting, the minutes of tonight's meeting against our deputy supervisor shouldn't be investigated when the act of our comptroller who was retired and no longer works for the town should be investigated. Um, so with that, I would like to amend resolution uh, number 178 to be it further resolved that the town board authorize retaining another outside attorney or law firm or this one to investigate the allegations of our deputy supervisor that are contained in court documents and sworn allegations and referred to uh, in privilege of the floor this evening. Okay, so is that your motion? Is to it amend? is. Okay, so we have a motion to amend. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second that motion. So you have a motion to amend, second on the motion. Clerk, is there any discussion on that motion, first of all? Well, I will just say that I, I think that there are two separate issues. So when you're uh, considering what the scope of an investigation should be, that's, I would suggest that that's something that we uh, do in an in, in executive session, as we have done um, in, in this particular case, where we discuss all of those things in executive session pursuant to public officer's law. So we've chosen to now uh, deviate from that um, way of doing things. Um, but again, I do think that they're separate and apart, um, shouldn't be made part of uh, this particular investigation, um, but certainly, you know, is something that can be discussed going forward. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment. Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. No. Councilwoman McGraw. Yes. Councilman McPartland. I've got a question for our attorney and uh, I guess I could have asked it earlier, but 
Uh, this is happening a little fast. I started to write down what Councilman Delarada said, but I'm not very sure about, you know, this. So I'm going to vote no. Supervisor Syed. No. So I have one, two, three no's, two yeses. Okay, so amendment fails on the motion. Uh, so on the original resolution as provided in the packet, we have a motion and a second on that. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion not as amended? Councilman Delorado. Come back to me, I'm still thinking. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Yes. Councilman McPartland. Yes. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Councilman Delorado. Yes. Five eyes. And this motion carries. Next resolution, 2020-179, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing certain budgetary modifications. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. If I could have a second on that motion. Second. Thank you. All those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, we are now adjourned just shy of midnight. Thank Very you to all the staff and the folks that's, that stuck around with us, especially our, our staff. Sorry again for the lateness, folks. Absolutely. Yep, Thank and well you, done. Everyone. Thank you to everyone who's stuck with us so late in the night. Everybody have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Good night. Good night.